Hello again, Vince back again with the Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit. Trying to fix it up on a shoestring because everything's so expensive on it. But it's what I like doing anyway, trying to fix what we've already got rather than just replacing everything. So I don't know what to do in this video today because the weather is going to be against me, I think. It's been raining on and off all day, but never know, the sun may come out now. So I think I'm going to just do little jobs that need doing. I mean, I say little job, I might only end up doing one job, but hopefully I might get through some in this video here. All little minor things. That I don't really need doing but still it would be nice to have them working so if you have a look we've got the hazard warning lights here it's on this little pull thing that you pull out and I can hear it and also I can see it here can you see the lights here and here actually let's just check to see if the indicators are working I don't even know if they are or not yeah that's going that's going That's weird. I can see a little flash in here, but uh, it just looks like it's on permanently there. Well, yes, I mean, if I look in there, it is it is working, but uh, yeah, you can see that one flashing. Can you see this one flashing though? Nah, that's not right. So this one is flashing, just about, really hard to see. But that one, I can't see anything at all. Okay, might have to look into that there, but, it's also not flashing here. There's a little thing just down here that should be flashing up red. Now, I've already had this down before, so I'd quite like to see what's behind here anyway. And then it will give me more and more access to other things when I need things to do, because apparently heat doesn't work. I haven't checked that out yet, but I presume I'm gonna to need to get under there for that. So I'm gonna start on that and we'll see, we'll take it from, from there. If there's an easy fix, I'll move on to something else, or it might just be trying to get that working and trying to get the light flashing fully at the front there. So to begin with, I'm gonna take this off here by undoing, there's a little access hole just in here and also one just over there as well. Okay, so this is removed now and if I zoom right in here, I can see that there's a little bolt just there. So there's gonna be one the other side, so I need to undo them. But first of all, there's gonna be something hidden up here. It's gonna also be attached up here somewhere. So uh, I already printed this out, I think when, I don't know what I was looking at, but I printed it out as previously. And it says here to remove the center console. Firstly, we've got to remove the upper instrument fascia panel, which is this panel here, which already looks loose. It looks like there's a screw half undone here. It looks like a screw's missing here. There's another screw here. Maybe originally there were some nice little chrome covers or chrome screws, I don't know. I just want to quickly say that the beginning part of this video here, the filming will be a bit weird because I I didn't have the right tripod mount on my camera. I had the overhead mount, not the one that I use on my normal tripod when I'm at the car. So I'm kind of filming by hand, doing the work, filming by hand, doing the work. So you're kind of seeing it after the work has been done. But then later on in the video, I do just cable tie my camera to the tripod and it kind of works okay. Anyway, let's get on with uh, taking out this dashboard. Bind on the screw here and the one that was half undone here. Maybe these ones here are original. I mean, this one is missing the little cup washer. But if you look here, they do look kind of bronzed. I thought maybe it was rust, but it's not. And I think that is to blend in with the color of the wood. So uh, I'm hoping in the burner phone box, that's now in a bag down there, that I might have that one here. I'm hoping it will crop up somewhere. Anyway, right, I've got to undo these. There should be little grub screws underneath, but there's not. Can you see there's a little hole here? for a grub screw, but it's uh, another thing that's missing. So maybe I'll have to see if I can buy some tiny grub screws. This one here as well is also missing. So these are to adjust the, I think the air for the vents here. Right, so that's all undone. This should come out now. I've got to be careful because I can see a line. I can see a bit of a crack down here. So I think I'm gonna to try to take it off from up here. Oh, well, here we go. Oh, look at that. Let's have a look at this. There you go, 4990. Numbers there. Oh, and they've done a little, they've done that around there, but why have they not put that on here? Is it because it's built in here? No, maybe not. Right, okay, these are not working either. So it gives me a chance to look at them. 
maybe that can be in this episode ah uh, look that screws broken yeah so these are the mounts here extremely well made look at that so this is where you screw into but that screw there is uh, broken so i have to get some pliers and try to take that one out oh this is good here we go we've got a big screw here and a big screw here so let's undo those two let's undo the bolts down here i've also got to take this down with just a button at the side this is the fuse board so i can take that down and that should give me access to in fact no i've already got access to it here anyway i don't need to take off the fuse board because there's access here then we can get behind there and see what's going on i'm going to put this way in a safe place but look at that that is all one nice big solid piece of wood lovely Right, this screw that's broken off here has proven a bit difficult to remove with the pliers. So what I'm going to do is, I've got the Dremel tool, I'm just going to try and cut a little groove in here, making sure the sparks don't damage anything. And uh, then I'm going to use a screwdriver and see if I can unscrew it. Right, annoyingly that didn't work. I, uh, I did it, but then when I went to unscrew it, it just uh, collapsed on itself. So I'm going to put some of this penetrating oil that I have, and I'm going to spray it on there for a while and see if it can work its way in. Maybe I can use the pliers then. That little fella is not budging whatsoever. You can see all the metal dust that's coming from here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the Dremel tool. I'm gonna cut it completely flush and then I'm gonna try and drill it out. My oh my, it's a nightmare. Right, so I cut it back flush. I've now gone through two drill bits because of the amount of pressure I need to put on the drill. It just uh, keeps snapping, but you can see I've got part of it out that little bit here and it doesn't actually look very deep in here so i think what happens is the screw goes quite a bit the way through the dashboard so i only actually need to get through this bit here which is welded on so a little over a centimeter so i haven't got much more to go so i do have one more drill bit so hopefully that will get through it nightmare though hallelujah it made that lovely sound where the drill bit just went all the way through so i'm going to get one of the screws now and see if i can screw it in there see how bad the thread is so a load of it fell behind but look i did manage to get these two bits out and you can see that they are you know the full-on outside of the screw well you might not be able to see that let me zoom in there you go you can see it there so yeah hopefully the actual thread is going to be okay on the this part here okay you can see that's screwed in there nice so uh, yeah that's fully strong it's screwed in nice and tight so luckily that's undamaged right now let's undo these two screws here and the two bolts at the side and lift this forward let's see now is this whole thing gonna lever forward yes it is oh look at this look at this look at this look at this now wow right we've got lots of things disconnected front out what's this say here ATT. Oh, that's coming from the radio. Sorry, that's the radio, so that's not going to be used. Right. Oh, do you know what? There's nothing connected to this radio at all. Hence the reason it's not working. Right. Uh, well, we can worry about the radio in another video. But yeah, there's nothing there at all, is there? It's just the radio connected. Uh, you know, just you know, just the wires coming out of the radio. There's not. There's nothing from the actual car connected to it. It's weird. Anyway, it looks like I have to pop the radio out. What's this thing here? Well, I don't know what these are. Some sort of temperature probe? Don't know. Right, let me try to uh, take the radio. Oh, there you go, the radio is ready to come out anyway. So I'll take the radio out and that will give me access down here. And then I can see what's going on. So do these things unclip? I wonder, are these sealed or can you actually change the bulb in them? Not too sure, we've got a cigarette lighter there in the middle. Oh, here's the aerial here. I'm coming across here. Well, hopefully that's all gonna be okay. And we've got a load of, we've got like the wiring loom going off here with loads of things not connected. Well, let me use both hands and see if I can see what's going on. The radio was placed in there just for show, which is really odd, unless of course they didn't want an empty gap there because it might look untidy, so they just shoved the radio in. But nothing was connected, and as far as I can see, none of those connectors actually connect up to these connectors here. So they're completely different. So I presume this loom here is gonna be for the radio, is what I'm thinking. Maybe this thing here is for the different speakers, this sort of din 
connector not too sure but I need to obviously learn all about that and you see we've got all this stuff here as well which again doesn't look Rolls-Royce so maybe it's been extended so it fitted different radios throughout the years because obviously you know this car's old now it would have had various different sound systems throughout the years but uh, yeah looking in here it looks like we have an amplifier can you see here and it's labeled up 4990 and if you have a look here it says four times 20 watt so it's got four times 20 watt speakers and that must be some model number there bqa 107 so if i don't know what's going on there i can ask uh, todd from ellensburg amplifier repair and service i'm sure he'll know his way around that now i think we just need to try to disconnect oh, here we go it's a bulb isn't it so let me get the multimeter out and let's pull out this bulb just trying to do this one-handed and let's see if this has failed there we go hopefully this has just failed right check this out on crotch cam it is not the bulb so we have a problem which is great now i know everybody's going to say come on vince get on with the mechanics and all the rest of it all in good time see the thing is it's not that i need this to be working it's just that personally i love fault finding so now i'm going to enjoy tracing the wires back from there and seeing where they go to and hopefully we'll be able to find out what the problem is realistically it's probably going to take me all video and the thing is the more things we uncover so for example i now know that there's a load of rusty connectors in here since I've messed with that, my central locking seems to be working better. It's not locking everything, but it's now opening everything, I think, from the driver's door. Still needs work. But you see, when I find where this goes to, I might find another load of rusty connections, which then might fix the heater or something else. So it's not, in my opinion, I don't think it's a waste of time. I mean, I hope you guys are still enjoying it, because for me, these are like blue map fix-it videos. You know, why is that light not working? It's going to be interesting trying to fault find the wires back. So although the end fix isn't going to be like, wow, the light's working, amazing. To me, it's really interesting that it's not the bulb. Everybody would have thought it's the bulb. It's not. What's causing that not to flash? So, uh, yeah, I think what we need to do is just get the multimeter, put it to voltage here, DC voltage, and let's actually put it straight onto the prongs in here, just in case it's a rusty or dirty connection here, even though it looks okay. So I'm just going to turn the battery back on in the boots, and then we'll see what it's doing. Let's do this here. You can still see that it's working there. You can hear it ticking not doing anything i was doing something ah it's doing something so that says to me that it's probably let's push that turn it off let's see if it stops yeah now it's dropping let's go back up i think we're gonna find yeah that's definitely changing isn't it I think we're going to find some bad terminal somewhere. So maybe in fixing this one here, we might end up fixing the seatbelt one as well. So let's start tracing the wires back from here. I can see they go up to this connector. So we'll start off in this connector and then see where they go to after that. Maybe we'll have to get deeper into the dashboard as well. I have to look into these here to find out what well, these are not working. I can undo the screw here and here. Maybe I can take these back home to the blue mat and I might be able to apply voltage and we might be able to fix them away from the car. I might be able to apply 12 volts to them the connector looks clean and from here i've got one probe in there and you can hear it's coming up here the other probe is coming up here when i swap it over so we know it's on that wire there and that wire there so now in here it looks absolutely perfect there's no uh, no uh, bad wire in there so we now to f need, need to find out where this goes to which should be interesting i think i'm going to undo this screw and this screw here it might uncover more wiring Those connections are nice and clean which i suppose you would expect because it's inside the car and it's not really near anything that would leak oh well i don't know why they're not working and of course it could be a fuse issue so i'm just going to see where the wiring goes from here up oh 
Wow, unfortunately it goes into the main, main, main wiring loom which goes right the way across. Oh, I can see right up to, uh, yeah, where I think the wiper mechanism starts. Let me see if I can show you that. Right, so check this out. If you have a look in here, can you see that massive bundle of wires? It's huge. I would say it's two inches across, going right the way through the car there. Right, well I don't think it's just going to be a bad wire in the middle of the loom. So I think what I need to do is I think I need to find the electrical diagram for this and see where it goes to. I mean maybe it's somehow linked to the relay. So uh, I think we should have a look in the fuse board and just in case there's corrosion on one of the pins on the relay. Yeah, unfortunately the fuse is okay. So meter set to continuity. If you have a look here, it says here C2 hazard warning. So it's C2, so it's the third one down, second one along, which is this one here on the middle bank, just, uh, just here. And if you have a listen to the fuse, we know it's working anyway, because the hazard warning lights themselves are working. See, so it's not that. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a relay. I think I need to get the wiring diagram if I can for the uh, electrical stuff. And let's see, it might it might become obvious when I actually have a look because maybe somehow it goes from here down to one of the connections down here and maybe that's where we have the problem. So I love it when something is linked. So basically I've got the wiring diagram here and it just shows me where different connections are. So you can see that there's a connection here. There's also a connection somewhere near the steering wheel. But look at this, so this is interesting. So basically this is the left hand front indicator, the right hand front indicator. Now, it says number 22 here. I think that's the switch I'm working on, the little light, because it says warning lamp, hazard warning. So I think this is the one here. Now look, from this side, it just goes through earth points and like wiring connections. I also think, I never realized before, I think that this means the color. So this maybe B stands for blue or brown. Maybe that stands for green and white or gray and white. So that's uh, useful to uh, look into. I'll have to find out if there's a little key somewhere. But anyway, check this out. From here, we know that this is not working even though the lamp's working. And it goes down here, yeah. It goes through number 41 here, which I think is just some wiring harness thing. A center console plug and socket 12 way. Well, I don't know if I've looked at a 12 way one, but anyway, look what happens then. It goes into here and 33, because it says 33 here, is the hazard warning switch because it says it here, hazard warning switch. So now this bit's interesting, check this out. So look, it looks like the switch has various different contacts in it. And if we keep following my one, look what happens. It goes up here. It goes along, 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 along. Then it goes to just a kind of splice type thing here. And then where does it end up? The front right indicator. And do you remember the front right indicator? Wasn't working properly, was it? So by fixing this thing here, you might inadvertently fix the front indicator, which is an MOT failure if that's not working. So that is fan fantastic so now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to have a look at the switch here because maybe there's numerous contacts and maybe one of the contacts is not making the contact good enough all right this has suddenly got a lot more exciting so now i'm going to undo the screw the screw and also there's a couple of ones here and here i'm hoping then this will loosen up and then we can see what's going on behind this switch here i've got the battery disconnected in the boot again but i'm hoping to find a load of contacts there okay that's the four screws undone oh, oh that's annoying something dropped oh would it be the uh what would have dropped there Oh well, I'll find it. I don't think, it's not gonna be washers or anything because the black screws just went straight on there. Yeah, they just went straight in there. Uh, who knows, maybe it was something that came down from here. It might be a grub screw or something. I'll, uh, I'll, hunt, I'll hunt around for that later, later on, not now. Right now, is this gonna come undone? Oh no, we've got another screw here now. So we've got two more here and here. So that was just, uh, those two were just to hide that top little panel. So let's undo them and now that should pull down. Oh, pipe work. Oh, so that's going to be feeding the vents here. Oh, and this is the heater thing down here. Okay. 
Right, again, labelled up for 990. Oh yeah, we do have loads of connections. Something else just went flying. Well, I'm gonna have plenty of fun trying to find all these things that's going flying. So uh, yeah, we've got loads of connections right around here. So let me just go work out what's going on. I presume it's the middle connection and then it's going to be short into each of the outer ones when it's pulled out and when it's pulled in it's going to be separated so it does actually look like there's quite a few switches going on there and look we have more connections here so oh, we've got loads of connections here oh look at all this now we've got loads of room to work there we go right well i can undo each of them maybe there's going to be corrosion in one of these here let's check out see what's going on and look we've got more connections up here for other stuff right and it looks like we've got a control maybe down there for the heating you know the flaps to put them in different ways right let me check all this out well i've looked in every connector here and it all looks really nice there's no rust there corrosion or anything two of the connectors could have been mixed up with each other so i put a tiny little bit of gold paint there and also a little bit of a gold paint here just so i know which ones to put together but no they all look really really nice so what i'm going to do now i'm going to see if i can work out what's happening with this uh, connection okay i've balanced the camera on the tripod with a couple of cable ties so i'm hoping it's going to be okay now i've got my meter set to continuity there's something wrong with this switch here but I don't know whether it's my fault, the faults that we're experiencing or not. But on these top two contacts here, it, it, it's not between the middle one and the outer ones. I think it's just a load of switches going around the edge. So right now I'm just on the two top ones. And if I put it out, there, right. So you can see it's working now, but watch. A little bit more and it stops working. Then I'll go in a tiny little bit. There. So it's hitting this, yeah? And I'm nice and firmly on here, it's to do with this here. When I go in a tiny bit, there. So it works there, when I go in a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is scrub all this with some IPA. I mean, it looks clean, but it's ever so slightly tarnished, just on the top. If you look at the bottom, the bottom has a nice coppery shine to it. There. Can you see their nice coppery shine? But now look at the top ones. Can you see they're very, uh, they are very dull and oxidized, aren't they? Okay, so I'm gonna be using 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. This isn't gonna cause any damage to anything. I'm wondering, should I just clean this? Or do you know what? I am just gonna clean this, I'll tell you why. Because if, for example, the heating's not working, I wanna prove the fault onto here. So I know it would be easier just to clean it all now, but maybe I won't put everything back together until obviously all the faults are fixed. Uh, I'll have to keep the screws maybe in separate bags or something so I don't mislay them. So no, I'm not gonna clean the other stuff now because it'd be nice if the heating's not working to suddenly clean this and all of a sudden it starts working. So uh, yeah. And then if it is an easy fix, it means then in a future episode, maybe I can get a few fixes in the one episode because I haven't got to dismantle everything because it's already been dismantled. You all know what's coming now. While I'm scrubbing this, let's give a shout out to the massive and the members are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg, Amplifier Repair and Service. I mentioned him earlier in the video. Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeeps.com, King Kurd from Lowbook Auto Sales, DJVG, Ellis Garbutt, Pigsy, Kenneth Blenstrop Sorensen, Simba Tinabu, Gabe McCandless, Extreme 401, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, and Daniel Watson. Thank you guys. So I presume what happens here is the middle one, if you look at the middle wire, you can see when I pull the switch on, it does actually come inwards. Yeah, it comes towards, comes towards here. So what I think is we have a load of switches. So imagine now this is one of the switches, the two that's not working on top. Yeah, and then the middle wire is attached to, the one that does the in and out, is attached to a big lump of copper. So imagine maybe like a, a copper penny or something like that. And then when we pull it, this is the copper penny here, it's just doing this and it's shorting these two together. Then when we push it in to turn it off, it does that. So I think that's what's happening. So I think all around the edges, there's various switches. And by pulling it in, pulling the switch this way, you're pulling this lump of copper in to short these two together. So I think that's what's, uh, that's what's happening. So I reckon if we just keep using it and spray some of this 
contact cleaner in it, I think it's going to be all okay. Alright, so I'm just going to spray it everywhere. Pull it out and spray it again. And I just keep working it. you think with all the flex in here that that wire would eventually break this one here, the middle one because this tape's so close here so all the uh, movement's going to be on that bit I suppose the thing is though, how often do you have the hazard warning lights on? very rarely people do often in the UK use them to thank people behind them though you know, if you've been let out then uh, you just do the hazard warning lights I don't know if that's a worldwide thing or not it's not a highway code thing, it's just what people do. Same way when you flash your lights to let somebody go. It's not in the highway code, but people do it. Right, let's see now. Is that going to work? Yeah. So now that works with conviction. Right, now let's just go in a tiny little bit. Yeah, it's still working, still working, still working, stops. Right, so that one's working. Let's see if these two are connected to each other. No, they're not going to be, are they? One second. No, so they're not, because that one's out. Would these two be connected, I wonder? Yeah. Right, they're okay and that's not doing anything I wonder why these two connected to each other no right okay well there's wires there that I'm not sure what they're doing but there's definitely two lots that are working so I think we should connect this back up and see if we have power back on the hazard warning little light and let's see if the indicator at the front starts working again Okay, you've got a bit of rear seat cam going on there. Let's connect this back up. Do you know what? While I'm here, let me put some contact cleaner in all these bits, just in case they are slightly oxidised. Right, so that's connected up there. Let's put our, where's our little bulb on? Here. Right, so that's definitely working. And let's connect it up down here. Let's close this up. Right, okay, so will you be able to see that little light down here? Let me see. Yeah, you will be able to. Now, let me put the battery back on and let's see. Everything else is connected, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Hazards are on right now. Is the light working? No, the light's not. Ah, oh, but look at this. Oh, that's now working. No way. Without meaning to, we fixed the uh, that one there. That's amazing. I wonder now. Oh, do you know what it is? I bet when you start the engine, that just goes out. But we worry about that later. Right. Okay. Uh, it's not working. It's still not working. I've definitely got it connected up. But that other one, so we fixed the other one purely by uh, 
purely by cleaning up, I presume, the hazard warning connector. I mean, I haven't looked at the wiring for that one. But we fixed that one there. See, it's still on now, so it must be... Why would it be on? Is it because the lights are on? Let me close this door here. Let me see. I think the internal lights go off after about eight seconds. I want to see if that goes out then. There you go, it's gone out. So that comes on with the internal lights. Let's open up the door. Uh, how do I? Oh, I haven't got the, uh, I haven't got the catch on. Right now, is that back on? Yes, it is. So it's back on now. Close the door, and I'll let you know. I'm looking up at the internal lights. Can you see? Well, you can see the light down here. So when that goes out, yeah, they both went out at the same time. Okay, perfect. Right, that's good, but we still haven't fixed the problem that we're trying to fix. So now let me do this a few times, just in case. So I suppose we have to, what we have to do now is, maybe we have to trace the wires from here right the way back to here now. So let me kill the switch because I don't really know what connections I'm working on. Let me kill the battery again. So what I'm going to do is continuity. Now we know that this switch was iffy but I still don't know what some of the connections do on it. So maybe I'll be able to trace them back from here to that one there. So let's go to the bulb again. So on the bulb we've got two connections. Actually do you know what would be sensible? Let's just double check, just in case the bulb was a bad fit in there. Let me just go to volts DC. I'm going to put the battery back on. I just want to see if it's jumping any more than it did before. No, so it's still not working. I'm just going to have a look at the light out the front. No way, you're not going to believe this. It's uh, working really strong. Check this out. Look at that there, nice and strong. Look at that, it was not doing that earlier. It was welding. Now it's as bright as that side there. My other side one's working. Yes, that's working. Let's check this side. Yes, that one's working as well. Excellent. And let's just do the back. nice and strong and that's nice and strong now is that as strong that side there hold on now I don't think that is quite as strong could be the bulb though as that side there I would say that's slightly weaker one second I just want to double check the front yeah that side is still dimmer on that side so that left hand side is weaker unless of course it's different bulbs or maybe it's a relay for that side or something I need to look into that maybe not in this episode but uh, yeah but it's definitely I, I think it's brighter than it was before of course now it is a little bit darker than it was earlier I found that very hard to see before right so the battery's done again in the back now I'm wondering whether or not it's because of the uh, the light earlier that I couldn't see that indicator. So maybe maybe it's not better. In my mind I think it's better. I'm not really going to know until I watch back the video. Right, so from there I want to see if it goes directly to here or not. Yes it does. There now, does it come up anywhere else? Yes it comes up there and there. And there. And there. Right, that is coming up in loads of places. So maybe that is the ground side. Right, let me go on to this one. This should only be coming up in one place, I think. Oh, that's the middle one. Right, okay. So, if we have a short between here and here, for example, because they're all links. Let me just see if they're linked here now, if I just go on to here. 
Yeah, they are. So now, if I was to go between here and the middle one, maybe it's the middle one that's faulty, and turn it on, it works. Mmm. So the problem is further. Yeah, that's definitely working. The problem is further in. So obviously there's no voltage getting there from, from this switch. So now I need to find out from this switch where it goes to, which I think we need to check on the old wiring diagram. Right, okay, I'm just looking here. And on what I think is that bulb down there, it says one of the wires is down as B and one's down as GW. So I just wanna see. B's black and GW gray white, that makes sense. So then we come across and we go all the way into this switch here and it's down as gray white and then it comes out on the other side as gy which could be gray yellow so let's have a little look here have we got a gray white going into here but maybe it's not gray white maybe it's green white because we've got plenty of green and whites but they look like green and pink but maybe that's just discolored okay and it comes away in what a green yellow okay so it could be this one green yellow coming away where does that go into this connector here then it goes up into here right I think what I need to do now is I think I need to find out where this splice is so if you have a look from here it then goes up and it goes into splice 17 the problem is on splice 17 that's just here as it goes off to the front indicator but on splice 17 it's not labeled up here where splice 17 is it just says here, splice C, G, Y, G, Y, G, Y, and then G, Y, G, Y. So like three in, two out. But on the side here, there's nothing labeled up as splice 17. So I don't know where that is. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I am gonna put one side of my meter on there. I think I'm gonna go to this kick plate down here by the accelerator that I was working on before and see if any of them come up there. So I think we need to start looking in this area here. So now, what colour was, was I after? It's green and white, so surely it should still be green and white here. See, this is where the Telecom Tone and Probe would be good because you could use the wands, put the tone on, and then you could listen around here, and you might get an indication of where it's coming up. I think I'm gonna have to undo the work that I did the other day, so I think I'm gonna undo that screw there and also that screw there, take this off here and it will give me a little bit more room to work. Right, okay, so I've undone that. Basically, there's wiring going right the way back there, as far as the eye can see, connected right the way back. So I'm going to try to find out where it is by just probing. So I'll do a couple on camera, but then I'll do the rest off camera because there's going to be loads here. Really, I could do with this coming out. How does this even come out? Oh, there's a screw. Let me undo the screw. There's like a metal bracket on it with a screw. A little screw there so I'm just gonna do you know what? I'm gonna put a bit of masking tape on there and keep that with that I just want to double check yeah we're still getting over there I can see a green and white wire going up into this one here I think that's the only green and white one I can see here that's not getting there Okay, I don't want to give away the outcome of the video, but have any of you spotted a mistake I may have made? And when I say may have made, I mean I have made. So uh, yeah, a real, what I would call schoolboy error, something so obvious, 
and uh, it wastes about, well, is it wasted? Not necessarily because by tracing cables it will help me do future faults but it definitely took up a good 45 minutes of my time or longer before I realized. So I won't tell you what I did just yet, you'll find out later in the video but some of you will already know. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn my attention to the indicator at the front and work back from there because we know that they're linked and we know that the indicator was weak before. So let's work back from the indicator and see then if we can work out what's going on. Okay, I can see two wires coming down. We do have a connection. Where's that black wire go? <laughs> right <on> my face. <laughs> oh my god. The hell? I just ate a bit of mud. There and there. There and there. So that's just two connections. Where does it go to then? I think it goes up on that. Well, it disappears into this box. One second, let me just see if I can now I know where the cable is. Right, if I'm not mistaken. So this is the kind of box where it disappears up into. It comes up here, there's two cables coming up here. I think it comes up and I think it travels along under the wing here, going up this way. That's what I think. Up here, up here, up here. Branches off to feed something down here. Where does that go? So it goes into here, let me undo this again. Right, so from here it comes along. It goes through here probably not through that, I don't actually know what that is, but it could be, but I don't think it is. Then it goes through here, and it goes into this wiring loom here, which, where it kind of splits to feed here, and also the relays, and uh, continues on here. Here, it goes down, it goes down here, and then it just comes back up here, and it goes into that connection there. So, that again is going into, you know, that footwell area, I think. So now I'm gonna go inside, see if I can find where that actually comes up. Well, this is a mystery to me because it goes through there and I can see, I can actually see where it goes through because on this side here, we have one blanking plug, which is just kind of blanked off there. And then all the wiring loom goes through the other one there. And yet, when we look up here, I can see it. When I shine the torch in here, I can see it coming up right up into the uh, the corner in there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but basically it comes all the way through, and then it just starts feeding the connectors at the very uh, at the very bottom here, which I've checked. So that is a real mystery to me. So the lights go to there, the indicators go to there. So I need to go back to this switch again, and I think I need to actually really see where the wiring goes to. Do you know what I could do? Does it go through? It goes to the switch to green and white. Uh, what am I on about? Why am I looking for green and white? The green and white's feeding here. I need to be looking for another colour that goes away from there. The green and white's feeding that. I need to be looking for what other colour goes away from it. Anyway, if I... Oh, no, Vince, you silly idiot. Oh, you stupid, stupid person. I had it off here, didn't I? I need to have it on here to get the connection to go through from here to all this cable in here. Oh, that's unbelievable. Right, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the battery back on because of the very fact that I've removed all these and put them back together, it may now have fixed itself, but I still wanna find out where the 41 is because uh, I need to clean it properly. Oh, God, what a, oh, what a, ah. Oh. It's not gonna connect through, is it? So it's only going as far as here and it's not being pushed through because I didn't have it on. What an idiot. Right, okay, so I can hear it going away for itself there now. Let's just see if I can balance this. 
Right, let me put my meter to DC volts. Right, let's see now if we're going to have 12 volts here. Unbelievable, we have. Can you see my meter? We have, so it's a connection down there which is faulty. Look at that, nine volts. Right, okay, let me pop that in. And let's get the bulb in. So, oh, schoolboy error there. But look, again, you know what I mean? I'm not the only one to make mistakes like that. And now you'll, you'll know for, uh, look at that, yes! Beautiful, oh, look at it go. Fan. Fantastic, how good is that? Right now, let's kill the battery switch and let's find out. I bet it was on that very first connector with those big wires. Ah, oh, beautiful, look at that. So I was kind of right, it was in the footwell. I thought it might be in the footwell. And uh, yeah, it's just I didn't have the switch on. So I hope that makes sense now. Because I didn't have the switch on, the power wasn't going through. So when I was using continuity on my meter, if I had the switch on, it would have traveled from the switch through the switch onto this kick uh, where all the connections are down by the accelerator pedal but because the switch was broken disconnected of course it couldn't connect through right okay <laughs> here we go, we've got it here. Right, let's disconnect this and see the condition of the inside. Not oh, to me, that looks pretty good. Right, so it's not there, it's here. Now, it's coming up in quite a few places though. That doesn't look overly corroded. Let's give it a spray. Or well, say overly corroded, to be honest, it looks perfect. I'm wondering if it's going to come up on other connectors as well. Let me have a look at my lead. Maybe my lead's shorted against the ground. No, I don't think it has. But mind you, because the switch is now on, we've put that through to various different places, haven't we? Because the switch has loads of connections on it. Just going to undo it and do it up a few times. There we go. Now, is it coming up anywhere else? Put it there. up down here and this is the rusty one right yeah this is rusty here very rusty yep yeah, this is the culprit here right thing is it's coming up in so many different places because who knows it could be spice here there and everywhere but let me bring the camera down to show you how rusty this is I'm gonna give this a real good clean now I think this is the problem one here and can you see if we zoom in can you see the corrosion in there remember I've already cleaned this previously and but I only cleaned it roughly because I was trying to uh, it wasn't the fault wasn't actually here the fault was in the wiring loom where it went through the door but you can see the corrosion there so now this will give me a nice excuse to get the brattle in here get some sandpaper in here and uh, clean it all up and also clean up this bit here make these nice spray some contact cleaner in there and i think hopefully then that will be a reliable fix so i'm just going to be scraping them everywhere and on these bits here. I wonder if I could wrap a little bit around the brattle here. What I'll probably do here is maybe get a 
flathead screwdriver and just put it in here. Well, do you know what? That's going to work, isn't it? If I keep twisting that. If I get little bits like that and put it in there, I think I'll be able to scrape that clean. Right, I'm sure this is going to take a good 20 minutes or so, but I want to get it nice and clean. And uh, yeah, then we can finish up the video. Right, okay, I'll give them a real good scrub now, and if you have a look, you can see that they look quite nice. I sprayed switch cleaner in here as well, and also this one here. Harder to clean this one, but I think it's better than it was. Now, weird thing is, I didn't suspect it would be these because this one here is feeding along down here. But I suppose if we think about it, maybe this is how it gets to the rear indicator. So uh, yeah, kind of makes sense. Right, okay, so I'm going to just leave things like that now. Let's pop the battery on. And yeah, there we go, we've got the seatbelt light on there. I don't know why, I really like that and the lights on there what's weird though why i mean the seatbelt light i haven't looked at the wiring diagram for that i might do that later when i'm at home just out of curiosity but why that started working when i cleaned the switch down here for the hazard warning lights now i know the hazard warning lights has numerous connections on it but why would that be connected to this you think that this would be connected to the interior lights because it goes off with the interior lights why is it running through here unless of course the fix was something completely different by me just unplugging and plugging in all other connections but they all look nice and clean anyway watch this now if i uh, do the hazard warning light here obviously this is not connected but there you go can you see now we have a nice light i really like that i am gonna obviously clean all this up at a later stage so these lights will look nice and clean and not dirty and we've got it going on here and i don't know if it's just because it's darker it probably is but i think the lights at the back are stronger so we've got that one there that one there i still think that is weaker than that one but that would pass the mot i think and if we look at the front working other size working you've seen that earlier and look at that there that has to be brighter than it was earlier earlier on i couldn't even see it do you know what i won't know until it's sunny again and then uh then I'll, I'll test it i'll test it then so i think inadvertently by cleaning those connections that we actually sorted out the brightness off the lights as well but i don't want to say that 100 percent because i'm not sure but 100 percent looks nice doesn't it it's looking good 100 percent that there is now fixed so uh yeah i suppose what's happened was this had had slight bit of tarnish on it and I think the main culprit was that connection down there. That's what I think anyway. I do hope you are enjoying the videos and I will see you very soon for another one. Take care everyone. Thanks for watching. something new whatever it was that held me back i'm sure it wasn't true holding on too long and unresolved questions hold you down what could have been a friendly smile has turned into a frown i'm moving on changes around me on and on i feel i must whatever happened to me happened for my highest good i read that in so many books now it's almost understood i'm moving on